All right, welcome back guys. Today's video, we are gonna be showing you how to run Jupyter Notebooks. So we're gonna be either using Anaconda or we're gonna, you know, just use it as in, you know, a regular pip install through Jupyter. I'm gonna leave the links down below for uh, these pages. So now let's talk about what Jupyter is. Jupyter is what's gonna be hosting it in a sense. And we have Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab, it's, uh, think of it like MATLAB in, in a sense. It has uh, more of the tools you know you would need, but for our purposes, we're gonna just be installing the classic Jupyter notebooks, you know, as it mentions right here. Classic Jupyter notebooks. Um, we can install it through Conda, uh, or we can install it through Pip. So we're gonna be installing it through Pip in this video. So let me pull up a fresh terminal over here, and let's uh, make this bigger so everyone can see. So first thing it says, it's if you use pip, you can install it with pip install notebook. And of course, you're going to want to have pip already installed. If you don't know how to install pip, um, you know, do a quick Google search. Pretty much if you don't know, look, I'll show you um, how to install pip on Mac OS or whatever operating system you're on. And you'll get it over here. So here's a pip installation, pip 22.2, uh, I think is the latest version. And, you know, just go through it. It might seem a little daunting, but if you you know mess around with it, you'll you'll pretty much find it out. Um, here I'll show you. I had already uh, installed it, so this is pretty much what I'm running on my system. If I run just pip install dash dash upgrade pip, I'm gonna get an error. Um, I'll show you right here. You know, yeah, there you go. It's not writable. So in order to fix this problem, if you encounter it, uh, I just do sudo pip. And install and it should upgrade pip and then you're just gonna want to enter your password and everything would be nice CSS already up to date so now we're ready so we're gonna clear out our screen and we're gonna go exit this out so we have pip installed now that we have pip installed now we can follow this here let me fix this real quick all right there you go excuse me all right, so now that you have pip installed, uh, we're gonna wanna follow these directions and it says, you know, just do pip install notebook. Simple as that, so we're gonna do pip install, and then we're gonna write notebook, just like that. We're gonna let it run, it's gonna, you know, do everything it has to do. Thing. We're just gonna let this run through and when it's finished, we'll get right back into it. All right, so now that it's uh, finished, here, let me just clear this out of the screen. All right, so now that it's, it's done, um, we're just gonna, in order to run our actual notebook or, our, you know, our web browser that's gonna allow us to do this we're just going to want to do a jupyter and then we're just going to run a new notebook just like that let it run and uh you know basically it's going to start hosting it and again we just create a new one or this is the used one here let me create a new one python 3 file or if you're going to want to create a folder terminal whatever it might be create a new file we can name it over here you know we name it anything anything you want make it meaningful I'll name it A real quick because I'm going to delete it soon. And let's just confirm. We'll be like print hello. We execute it, it's going to print hello. Or we can be say x equals 10. If we run it, it's going to print hello because we didn't call x, but we can call x by itself like that. And it'll be hello and x. So there you have it. That's the way to do it through the you know, to the normal terminal. And keep in mind though, we're, we just downloaded Jupyter Notebooks. So we can run it on our terminal, but it's not gonna have all the fancy things. Now let me explain to you what all the fancy things are. So if we make our way, yeah, let's close this out real quick. If we make our way back to our, you know, our browser, let's close, you know, the Jupyter stuff. We're gonna talk more about Anaconda. So what is Anaconda? Anaconda is, Think of it as a as a package. You're getting a package in the mail, and it has a lot of things in the package. You can use whatever's in the package, or if you don't want to use it, then you don't use it. But it's there, so that's pretty much how Anaconda works. It's uh, uh, it's really interesting. It has uh, here. Let me let me find the reference I saw earlier. Or was it? I think it was in products. Yeah, maybe we want to go to individual. So your data science toolkit. Uh, I guess it's better better reference to say toolbox. But um, yeah, so pretty much it's just gonna have a whole bunch of open source libraries that you can use. Uh, this is what the user interface is gonna look like. Um, you know, 
So what is the anaconda used for? You can go through all this stuff, but I'm pretty sure if you are reading this and following along, I'm pretty sure you kind of understand why you want to use this. So we're going to want to make our way down to Anaconda installers, whether you're going to be using Windows, Mac, or Linux. You'll find it over here. It's going to be either the 64-bit command line installer, 32-bit graphical installer. You know your system. Do however you're going to want to do it. And you're basically going to install. So if, we, if I just click it, I'm not going to install it because I'll click it though, but it's going to basically bring a whole package manager. And um, it's just going to prompt you to a screen. It's going to ask you, where you want to save it whether you're you know whatever hard drive disk whatever you want to you know save it to save it to whatever you need and i already have it installed so let me just pull it up real quick yeah there you go so where it is anaconda navigator let me pull it up but yeah that's pretty much all there is to it to get started you just download it now this uh, this one does have everything as i mentioned before as opposed to jupyter notebooks and you can actually it will, this already comes preloaded with Jupyter Notebooks and it has uh, Jupyter Lab, you can use PyCharm, the Qt Console, Spider, Gluvian, Orange 3. You can use uh, these different tools. So if I launch, well, here, because um, it, it took me a while to understand this when I was first doing it, because it, it, uh, trust me, it's, it's kind of confusing if it's the first time you're seeing it, you're like, whoa, what's going on? So um, here. So applications on base root, which is just going to be the entirety of it, like the whole, like we'll, we'll call it the foundation, the foundational of your system. You know, if I launch it, this is what's going to be on it. Uh, I have uh, uh, these two. I don't know from when I did them. And uh, but here I'll go with the base root. And so basically, what we're going to want to go to is we're going to go into channels. Oops, sorry, no, 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 environments. My bad. And as you can see, the base root, which is going to be like the main one, we're going to go over here and we're going to see that all of these, these things are installed and you can check the version. You can look, you can search for different packages. So here, let me search up pandas. You know, there you have it. High performance, easy to use data structures and data analysis tools. It's already checked, checked because it's installed, you know? So if we go and confirm this, so we're going to go back to our home. We're going to launch Jupyter Notebooks. Same thing as you know, typing it into your terminal. The difference is this is already installed. So if we do, if we want to write, let's say some pandas library thing. So uh, we're gonna want to do import uh, pandas as pd. You know, we run this, let it run. So yeah, as you can see, it ran it, no errors. And just to confirm it here, we'll do, we'll do a, a, the simple uh, read CSV. So we'll do a data frame. Uh, we're gonna set this equal to, and we're just gonna do, um, whoops, my bad. We're gonna do PD for pandas, and then we're gonna do read underscore CSV file. And inside our file, we're just gonna write the name of our destination, which uh, I'll just look at my desktop. Let's see, I have a uh, Coursera CSV. Uh, do you spell it? Yeah, Coursera CSV. And we got we gotta give it a path. You know, let's not forget to give it a path. So if you recall, where are we at? We're in our core, so we're in our dot slash, and we're gonna want to go into untitled. Uh, well, no, it's already in our slash, so we're just gonna do dot slash and my desktop. So let's go to our desktop. You write that destination, and uh, there you go. And yeah, it loads. So now let's do. Uh, let's get let's print out the first uh, five. So we're just gonna do, oops, uh, data frame dot head, and let's print it out. So there you go. You got a named uh, post uh, postal code, borough, neighbor, and you know you can do all any sorts of things you want to do now. So that pretty much wraps it up. Pretty short video. Um, hope you find use to it or are able to install it. If you can't, I'm, I'm pretty sure. If you leave a comment, I'll help you troubleshoot it. But if you don't understand something, then definitely look it up online. Very great resources online. You can look at documentation if you're having trouble. I think I had trouble with the uh, Anaconda and oof, it took me a while. But yeah, that, that's pretty much wraps it up. I'm just putting out this video so we can continue on into a little series that I have going on. And because I decided I'm going to start using um, Jupyter Notebooks more because it's just it's just amazing like for what we're trying to do it's it's really amazing i love it
So yeah, um, stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna be talking about loops. And so yeah, thanks for watching.